Welcome future nurses to Diagnosing Chapter 12 of Cultures and Herbs Fundamentals of Nursing. Thank you so, so much for clicking on the video and please like and subscribe if you find this information helpful. The introduction discusses the history of nursing diagnosing, which formally began in 1973 when Christine Jebby and Marianne Levan wanted to identify the role of the nurse in the ambulatory setting. They began to hold yearly conferences, and in 1987, the International Nursing Conference was named the North American Nursing Diagnosis Association, formerly known as NANDA. The purpose of NANDA is to define and promote a taxonomy of nursing diagnostic terminology for general use by professional nurses, and taxonomy is a classification based on a principle. So let's talk about NANDA nursing diagnoses. Let's begin with the definition of a diagnosis. It is a statement or conclusion regarding an event, and diagnostic labels are standardized NANDA names for diagnoses. And a nursing diagnosis is also called the patient's problem statement, and it is the diagnostic label plus the etiology. And the etiology is just the cause or the root of the problem. There are different types of diagnoses. The first is an actual diagnosis, which is present at the time of assessment. An example of this is anxiety related to possible cancer diagnosis as evidenced by, and then you would include the signs and symptoms. This can also be like a direct quote from your patient that leads you to believe they have anxiety and also any behavior they may be displaying that shows they have anxiety. Next is health promotion diagnosis, which refers to a readiness to improve health status. An example of this is readiness for enhanced nutrition, and a health promotion diagnosis usually includes the word readiness. Next is a risk nursing diagnosis. This diagnosis, the problem does not exist, and there are just risk factors that lead you to use this diagnosis. An example of this is risk for infection related to incision. And next is syndrome diagnosis, which describes a cluster of nursing diagnoses with similar interventions. An example of this is chronic pain syndrome and also post-trauma syndrome. Syndrome diagnoses usually include the word syndrome in the diagnosis. There are three components of NANDA diagnosing. They include the problem, the etiology, which is the cause of the problem, and defining characteristics, which are the signs and symptoms of the problem. The problem must be defined clearly and concise, and you must use a NANDA label. The etiology is like I mentioned before, the cause, and you have to use the word related to, and then the etiology, so you have the problem related to in the etiology. With the risk diagnosis, this can include the risk factors as the etiology. And defining characteristics are just signs and symptoms, and a risk diagnosis does not have signs and symptoms. So with the risk diagnosis, it only has two parts. It has the problem and the etiology and no defining characteristics, simply because the problem doesn't exist yet. So it can't be any signs and symptoms of a problem that doesn't exist. Differentiating nursing diagnoses from medical diagnoses. Medical diagnoses refer to a disease process and they have dependent functions which are physician prescribed therapies and treatments. Nursing diagnoses describe the human response, which is a patient's physical, sociocultural, psychological, and spiritual response to an illness or health problem. It's not the actual illness itself. That would be the medical diagnosis. Nursing diagnoses also change as the patient's response changes and they have independent functions which are unique to nursing. And if a patient was admitted with a medical diagnosis of stroke, the nursing diagnosis could be acute confusion related to abrupt cerebral hypoxia as evidenced by increased restlessness, illusions, and increased agitation. And if a patient had the medical diagnosis of pneumonia, the nursing diagnosis could be impaired gas exchange related to excessive respiratory secretions secondary to infection as evidenced by 89% oxygen levels and wheezing. And also, if you just had a patient in the hospital, another nursing diagnosis could be risk for social isolation related to hospitalization. And that's just an example of a nursing diagnosis that's not so disease related and could be more psychological or socioculturally related. 
So now that we reviewed the difference between a medical diagnosis and a nursing diagnosis, let's review a question. Which diagnosis below is not a correct nursing diagnosis? A. Risk for falls related to loss of limb. B. Impaired communication related to stroke. C. Acute pain related to tissue trauma secondary to fracture as evidenced by pain rating of 8 out of 10, guarding of affected limb, and crying. D. Deficient fluid volume related to excessive urinary output secondary to uncontrolled diabetes as evidenced by dry skin, increased serum sodium, and weight loss of 4 pounds in one day. So A. Risk for falls related to loss of limb. This is an appropriate nursing diagnosis because it is a risk diagnosis, so it will only have two parts, and it has the problem, which is risk for falls, and it has the etiology as loss of limb, so this is an appropriate nursing diagnosis. B, impaired communication related to stroke. This diagnosis is, it appears to be a two-part diagnosis, but is not a risk diagnosis. So risk diagnoses are usually the only diagnosis with two parts. This one is missing the defining characteristics. It also has the etiology as stroke, which is a medical diagnosis in itself. So this would be an incorrect nursing diagnosis. It could have said impaired communication related to altered mental status secondary to stroke and then as evidenced by and have different defining characteristics of the patient to make it correct. But as it is right now, B is the incorrect nursing diagnosis. And C, acute pain related to tissue trauma secondary to fracture as evidenced by a pain rating of eight out of 10, guarding of affected limb and crying. This nursing diagnosis is correct. It has the problem as acute pain. It has it related to tissue trauma secondary to fracture, which is the etiology. And if you do include medical terms or medical diagnosis, you always need to include secondary two and then the medical diagnosis. And then it also has the defining characteristics by saying as evidenced by, and it has the pain rating, the guarding, and the crying. So this is a correct three-part nursing diagnosis. And the next deficient fluid volume related to excessive urinary output secondary to uncontrolled diabetes as evidenced by dry skin, increased serum sodium, and weight loss of four pounds in one day. This is also cor correct. It has a, it's a three-part nursing diagnosis. It has the problem as deficient fluid volume, and it has it related to excessive urinary output secondary to uncontrolled diabetes. And you know, diabetes is a medical diagnosis, so it has that secondary too, which is needed if you want to include that. And then it has the defining characteristics as well. So just remember with diagnoses, you want to have your problem related to your etiology, and then you want to have as evidenced by, and then your three defining characteristics to have a proper nursing diagnosis. And always make sure you're using the NANDA labels. There's different books out there. The one that we used for my class was Handbook of Nursing Diagnosis by Linda Wall Carpenito. Looks like a little dictionary, but it has all the different NANDA regulated nursing diagnosis, which is what you need to use in nursing school and in nursing period. Let's talk about differentiating nursing diagnoses from collaborative problems. A collaborative problem begins with the words potential complication and it focuses mainly on monitoring and preventing complications. They require both medical and nursing interventions and the structure of a collaborative problem includes the words possible complication and the related disease or treatment. An example of one is potential complication of head injury, increased cranial pressure. So increased cranial pressure is the possible complication and the potential complication of head injury is including the related disease or treatment. A nursing diagnosis focuses on the human response and it varies greatly from patient to patient. Like with the collaborative problem, the potential complications related to an injury are similar among all patients with that injury. Unlike with nursing diagnosis, they can vary greatly from patient to patient. Nursing diagnoses are also more individualized and can be handled independently by the nurse, so they don't require medical interventions all the time, but collaborative problems require medical interventions and nursing interventions. 
So let's talk about the steps in the diagnostic process. First, you wanna analyze data. So you wanna compare it against standards. You wanna cluster your cues. So you wanna cluster your subjective and objective data. And you wanna identify inconsistencies and gaps within your data. Next, you want to identify the health problems, risks, and strengths of your patient, and you want to do this with your patient's participation. And this step just helps you to do the next step, which is formulate your diagnostic statement. So your diagnostic statement is just your nursing diagnosis, and it can be two parts, which is usually a risk diagnosis, and that's just the problem in the etiology. And then it can also be a three part which is the problem, etiology, and the defining characteristics. And remember, those are the signs and symptoms. It also can be a one part, which is just the problem itself. And the one part is usually not used in nursing, at least not in nursing school. And um, just keep in mind that the steps in the diagnostic process is analyzing data, identifying health problems, risk, and strengths, and formulating the diagnostic statement. Avoiding errors in diagnostic reasoning. So the best way to avoid errors is to always verify your data. You also want to have a good knowledge base and have clinical experience because having that background can help you to form the best diagnosis and help with your reasoning as far as knowing what problems are and what to expect and what diagnosis can fit what patient. And you also need to know what is normal because when you know what is normal, you can know what is not normal. And then knowing what is not normal is what you can use to base your nursing diagnosis on and ultimately treat and help the patient. You also want to consult your resources. By consulting your resources, you can help to notice any errors in any information you have or also notice any errors in any reasoning or conclusion that you're drawing. And you want to base your diagnostic reasoning on patterns and not just one incident. The best example of this is with blood pressure. Your patient may have an elevated blood pressure in the morning, just one morning on Monday. And you don't want to draw the conclusion that that patient may have hypertension and then start doing nursing interventions to help with that because you need to base it on a pattern, like different points of the day they have the same high blood pressure, then that's a good way to base your nursing diagnosis and your reasoning on. Because the human body is constantly changing and it can have just like a fluke and you don't wanna just treat a fluke because it can cause different problems. And you also wanna improve your critical thinking skills because when you do critical thinking, you're able to differentiate between what's valid and what's not valid and notice different inconsistencies and in information you have. And just using critical thinking skills can help you form the best diagnosis possible for your patient. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you made it to the end of this video, please like and subscribe and comment below any suggestions for improvements. As far as the video goes, I am new to YouTube and I'm just trying to see what works and just be as helpful as possible. And um, I just want to wish all the future nurses out there good luck and just thank you so much for watching my video.